so now we will see async and await in javascript so guys basically async and await make promises easier to write so previously we had seen the promise object how it is going to work and how we can call the callback functions related to the resolved and the rejected statuses of the promise over here now guys we can simply make use of the promises by using these async and await keywords over here the meaning of async is it makes a function return a promise in this case so instead of returning the entire promise over here we can use the prefix as async before defining the function in order to return the promise by default and also await helps us in order to make the function wait for a specific promise to return the resolution or the rejection over here so guys let us understand both that is async and await one by one with the help of example in vs code over here so what we will do is simply we are going to create a new file in this case so as you can see we have this async await.js file over here now guys what we will do is simply we are going to create a simple function that is display in this case and then what we have to do is let us say we want to return a specific string that is hello over here so simply we are going to return the string that is hello and then what we want to do is let us say we want to return a promise in this case so we say return followed by new operator and then this time we provide the promise keyword over here and then inside the parenthesis let us say we provide the resolved and the rejected callback functions over here and then after this inside the curly braces what we can do is basically we have to either call the resolved or the rejected callback function so let us say we provide the result and then we simply provide a simple string that is hello in this case so guys we are returning a promise over here with a resolution by using this resolved callback function now guys how do we receive this particular promise over here simply we can call the display function in this case so over here we provide the display function followed by open and close parenthesis and since it is returning a promise we have to use the then keyword over here so let us see what happens if we simply provide this particular display function call which is returning a promise let us see what will be the output so when we save this file now and try running this code over here by using the node command followed by the name of the javascript file so guys as you can see we are getting an error in this case it says unexpected token that is open curly braces over here so guys we have forgotten to provide the function keyword over here so simply we have to provide the function keyword so there will be this function keyword which will be enclosed within the promise over here so guys let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see there is no print message over here that's because we have not wrapped the display call over here with the help of the console.log statement so let us provide that as well let us see what will be the output when we provide the console.log statement and call the display method which is returning us a new promise in this case with the resolved status so when we save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal it says we are getting the promise and the string is hello over here so guys basically we are actually getting the promise in this case now how do we handle it properly if let's say we only want to print this particular message along with the other informational message over here so we have to remove this console.log statement so after we have called this display function over here we have to provide dot followed by the then keyword over here now guys inside this we are going to handle whether there is a resolution or the rejection of the promise that we are receiving so guys first of all what we have to do is we write the function that will be responsible in order to handle the resolution of the promise so over here we provide the value as the argument and then simply inside the open and close curly braces we will say success in this case so guys over here we provide success followed by the message that we are receiving that is value over here so guys this value it will be equal to hello this time because we are calling the resolved callback over here now in case if there is a rejection of the promise then what we have to do is after this function declaration over here we have to provide comma and then we need to provide another function on the rejected status so guys over here simply we provide the function and then we will provide error as the argument in this case and then once again we will simply have the console.log statement over here so we will say failure and then we will have the 
error variable that is the parameter that is getting passed to this particular rejected callback function. Previously we were getting this promise as the return value. Now let us see what will be the output whether it will be a success or the failure over here. So when we run this code once again over here on the terminal. So as you can see we are getting the success message with the hello keyword which we have passed by using the resolved callback function in this case. So guys in this way we can simply return the promise from a specific function and call that function and use this particular then keyword for followed by the two functions over here in order to handle the resolution or the rejection of the promise. Now guys instead of resolution let us say we call the rejected callback function. Now it depends on the network API call or any other task that we are doing which is going to return the promise whether it is a resolution or the rejection. But let us say for example if we are providing the rejection over here and then we say failed in this case. So let me just run this code once again over here. As you can see now we are getting the failure message this time and we are getting the error that is failed over here which means the second function is getting called due to this rejected callback function which is getting called over here. Now guys this is a very basic understanding as far as the returning of the promise is concerned. Now guys how we can use the async and await in order to make this more clear over here. So instead of typing all these lines of code over here with the help of the resolved or the rejected callback functions or any other name that you have used over here to represent the resolution or the rejection what we can do is simply we can return the message over here. So let us say we want to return return hello in this case. So simply we will say return hello over here. Now by default this particular string will be called with the help of the resolved callback function in this case. But in order to make this line of code return a promise we have to use the async keyword over here. So as you can see async makes a function return a promise. So by default it is a simple string that is getting returned over here. So let us see what will be the output if we don't use async. So let me just save this file now and try running this code. So as you can see we are getting the error in this case it says display then is not a function. So guys simply we are returning the string and that is why it is not able to handle this particular type of data that we are trying to handle while calling the display function. So what we have to do is simply before defining the function we have to use the async keyword over here. So as you can see this is the prefix that we can use before declaring the function. So let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here. Let us see whether we get any error right now. So when we press enter as you can see we are getting success and then hello instead of any error. So guys basically this async keyword is helping us in order to return the promise and it is the resolved promise over here that is getting returned with this particular message that is hello over here. So instead of typing all this that is creating a new promise and then providing the resolved and the rejected callback functions over here. Simply we can use the async keyword in order to return the promise and then handle it appropriately while calling that particular function which is declared with the help of the async prefix. So guys this is as far as the async keyword is concerned. Now guys what is the use of await over here? So guys basically when we are waiting for the promise to come which means in these lines of code we have taken a very basic example over here in reality we are going to wait for some response to come in the form of promise in this case. In that case what we have to do is we have to use the await keyword in order to wait for that particular line of code to be executed until we get the response from the server and then only move to the next line of code over here. So guys let us understand this with the help of example in this case. So what we will do is we will take a very simple API that will help us in order to to generate the random user. So guys over here this is the API. Let us see what will be the output when we simply call this API on the browser. So when we hit this particular API as you can see this is the response that we are getting in the form of JSON data. So guys let me just check this checkbox that is pretty print over here. So as you can see we get the JSON data inside which we have the results and then this square bracket meaning it is the array of results over here and then the first array it is again having the JSON data inside which we have the gender and then we have the name and then we have the location as well. So as you can see the other details of the user is also present. So guys basically this particular API will help us in order to get the details of the random user that can be generated over here. 
now every time when we hit the api the user is going to change over here so let me just hit this api once again in this case so now you will be able to see that another user with the first name and the last name is getting displayed over here so guys let us call this particular api in order to understand how this await keyword will help us in order to wait for the response to come from this particular api so let me just copy this api over here now guys how do we call any api in javascript simply we can use the fetch api in this case which we are going to learn again in the upcoming videos as well so over here we are going to provide the fetch method in this case as you can see it is going to take a parameter over here which is going to be the url over here so let me just provide the single colon in this case and then we provide our api which is going to generate the random user details now guys what we have to do is it is going to return us some response in the form of the json response in this case so simply let me just take that response in another variable that is response over here so as you can see we have let response it is equal to fetch and then we are going to get the data in response so the next step that we have to do is let me just quickly provide the console.log statement over here and let us see what will be the data that is coming inside this particular response variable so when we save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see it is providing us the promise and the status is pending over here so guys this is the default behavior of javascript whenever it is going to execute the line of code without waiting for the completion of the execution of this particular line of code it is moving to next line of code over here so basically what is happening behind the scenes is the javascript is calling this particular api but at least we have to wait for one or two seconds in order to get the response from the server in the form of the json format but javascript is not waiting for this response and it is quickly going to the next line of code in which case we have not received the response properly from this particular fetch method by using this api so guys that is the reason it is providing us that the status is still pending right now i have not received anything but since it is a promise maybe in one or two seconds or it depends on the internet bandwidth maybe after some time i am going to receive certain response which we can use later on so guys this is the meaning of this and in order to solve this what we can do is simply we can use the await keyword over here in order to wait for this particular line of code to complete its execution so simply before the fetch keyword we provide the await keyword over here so as you can see we have provided the await keyword in this case let us see what will be the output now when we save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal as you can see we are getting certain error so it says await is only valid in async functions and the top level bodies of modules so guys this is very important you cannot simply use await keyword in order to make a line of code wait anywhere in your javascript code so basically this line of code should be present inside another function which should be defined by using the async keyword that we had used previously so guys over here let me just define the function in this case so let us say we provide a function that is get data over here and then inside this function we are going to call these lines of code so let me just cut this and paste this inside the get data function over here so we are getting the compile time error it says await expressions are only allowed within async functions so we are going to make this function as async over here so as you can see this is the proper usage of the async and the await keywords while you are fetching some data from the network so guys over here we have defined the function with the async keyword and then we are waiting for this line of code to complete its execution so that we get certain data inside the response and then what we have to do is since we have defined the function over here we need to call this function that is get data so after this we are going to simply call the function that is get data over here let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so when we run this code as you can see it waited for some time and then we are getting certain response over here 
so this is the response that we are getting the response status is 200 which means it was a successful response that we have received the status text is okay over here and then we are getting some headers in this case so guys by default we are going to get this kind of data when we are going to read the response from the fetch method that we have just called in this case so this is a very simple example of the fetch method that helps us in order to return the promise over here and once a promise is received we are reading the response over here and we are getting this response which is okay right now so guys instead of getting that particular response that is okay how do we get this particular data from the api which is the json format so guys over here what we have to do is this particular response needs to be converted to the json format so we use dot followed by the json method over here so as you can see this is the method and then what we have to do is let us say we want to assign it to data in this case and then simply we can use the data variable name so guys over here we are converting the response that we are getting to the json format and then storing it into data and then we are printing the data variable so let us see what will be the output let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see it is waiting for the call to happen and then once again we are getting the promise that is pending over here now guys even though we have provided the await keyword for this particular line of code but since the conversion of data to json format over here is also taking some time so guys when the interpreter executes this line of code over here it is going to take certain milliseconds in order to convert the response to the json response over here which the interpreter is not waiting for and then directly it is executing this line of code so data is again having the promise over here which means the response has promised that i am going to return you some data but wait for some time but javascript is not waiting for this so in order to make the javascript interpreter to wait for this particular conversion again we have to make use of the await keyword for this particular line of code so guys over here we provide the await keyword once again so that the data is properly converted to the json format and then it is stored inside this data variable and then we can read this data variable inside the console.log statement so let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so it is waiting for the data and then as you can see now we have got a certain response over here so you will be able to see that we are now getting the results and then we are getting the gender as well and then you can see that name it is equal to object that's because name is another json object inside the outer json object over here and that is why it is just providing us this particular object in this case then we have location email login date of birth and so on basically all the details that we are getting over here from the api we are also getting while we are calling the api and displaying the data that we have received after converting it into the json format now guys let us say we only want to print the first name of this particular user that is getting generated over here using this api so what we have to do is simply we are going to access the results array over here inside the data since we are printing the entire data over here we have to provide dot and then followed by the results in this case so guys this is the way that we try to access the json data which we are going to cover in the next video as well in detail we are going to see how we can read the different fields over here as far as the json data is concerned so guys over here to quickly see how we can access this particular first name over here simply we provide the results keyword in this case followed by the zeroth position since it is the array over here by using the open square bracket in this case inside this we need to access the name object over here so after this we have to provide dot and then we provide the name object inside which we have the first field name over here which is the property of the json object so guys over here we provide dot and then simply we provide the first field name over here so this particular line of code will be responsible in order to print only the first name of the random user that is getting generated by using this api so let us see what will be the output let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal 
so as you can see it is waiting for the response now and this is the first name that we are getting from the api if we run this code once again over here we are going to get a separate name over here that is a different name so as you can see this is another name that we are getting so every time when we call this particular api we are going to get a different result for the random user that is getting generated over here so once again we are getting another first name in this case so guys similarly you can also access the other field labels over here inside this json form which is also having the array in this case so guys this is the way that we can use the async and the await keywords basically the async will help us in order to make the function return a promise and the await makes a function wait for a promise so we have used both over here we have used the async in order to define the function and then in order to make a line of code wait for a promise to come we are using the await keyword over here so basically these two keywords are used in order to to go against the asynchronous programming of the javascript that means we are making the javascript wait at this particular line of code until we get the result and then only we have to move to the next line of code and then once again we are awaiting over here which means the javascript will have to wait until it gets a certain data inside this data variable and then only it is going to go to the next line of code over here so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to talk about fetch api in javascript so stay tuned